In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Today is August the 8th, the feast of St. Chiriacus, Largus, and Samaragdus. These are old Roman and ancient names. You don't find your, many people named Samaragdus anymore. But here's a description of these martyrs to remind us of their greatness. St. Chiriacus was a deacon. He suffered a long imprisonment together with the Sicinius, Largus, and Samaragdus, the saints. And they worked. he worked many miracles. Among others, by his prayers, he freed Artemia, a daughter of Diocletian, from a devil. He was sent to Sapor, king of Persia, and delivered his daughter, Jobia, in like manner from an evil spirit. St. Chiriacus baptized the king, her father, and 430 others, and then returned to Rome. There he was arrested by command of the Emperor Maximian, bound in chains, and dragged before the chariot. Four days later he was taken out of prison, boiling pitch, that's the black tar that they do the pavement on the streets with. Boiling pitch was poured all over him. He was exposed on a scaffold and at length put to death by the axe with St. Largus and St. Samaragdus and 20 others in the gardens of Sallust on the Salarian Way in Rome. A priest named John buried their bodies on that same road on the 17th of the Calends of April, March 16th. Afterwards, on the 6th of the Ides of August, August 8th, today, Pope Marcellus and the noble lady Lucina wrapped their bodies in linen shrouds and embalmed them with precious spices. And they were transferred to the estate of that same St. Lucina in the Ostian Way at the 7th milestone from the city. So they give us the example of the endurance in hard times, endurance in persecution, being faithful to God, being faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Catholic faith, come what may. Whenever there's heavy persecution, most people slide with the, the, the direction everybody is going. During these persecutions, many of the Catholics burn incense to the gods. They just fell away. But these saints and many, many others, like St. Sebastian and St. Expeditus and uh, St. Agnes and Lucy and all these great saints, they would not go in a, and turn their back to God. They would not apostatize. And that's a special grace because they daily lived the sanctification of their soul. And this is what we have to be doing all the time, sanctifying the soul, ordering all our thoughts, all our actions to the glory of God. And all of them understood the most basic truth of the faith. Why am I here on earth? Why are you and I made? Why were we created? And then we go back to the most simple answer of the Catechism, one of the early questions. I am made to know, love, and serve God, and to be happy with Him forever in heaven. That's, that's the whole purpose we're made. And you boys, you gentlemen, knowing this, you have a grip on life better than many poor souls out there that have no clue why they're even on earth. They don't even know. And they think it's to get money, they think it's just to have total pleasure all the time, and it's to, just to waste away their time. And they, the, with the atheism now being taught in schools, Many of them really believe that once you die, you're like an animal. You just die and, and are buried and fade away with no immortal soul. But these are the lies of error and heresy in the modern world. And communism really promotes that there's no soul. Communism promotes atheism. And that's the air we breathe today. It's atheism, <coughs> which insults God. So why are you and I made? We're made to know God. We're made to use our intelligence to seek God. So we have to do. Here you're on this pilgrimage and we do spiritual reading together, but when you go home, you should make it a practice every day to do some spiritual reading. You've got to feed your mind or to listen to something like an audio book 
of Secret of the Rosary by St. Louis de Montfort or some other writings of the saints or Archbishop Lefebvre. You've got to be feeding your mind constantly. And look what the devil does. He does. He feeds your mind constantly. Drink Coke. Eat at Burger King. Come to Taco Bell. Constantly bar ba blasting the minds through the radio, through the internet, through advertisements, through the billboards. He's feeding the mind. But he, the devil, not that all advertisements are intrinsically evil. I'm just saying the devil... His focus is to turn our minds from God to the things of this world, to the pleasures of this world, so that we forget God and turn our back on Him. So we got to constantly feed the mind and think and, and speak with God through our heart and mind because all creation reflects the glory of God. When you see the glory of the, the beautiful ocean and the tremendous power of the waves and the 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 infinity of the ocean almost, it seems. As far as you can see, you don't see anything. And all that water, that's just, a, these are just tiny little works of God that remind us who the artist is, the creator is. He's all powerful, all knowing, all loving, all wise. So we got to know God. Know Jesus Christ. Know the scriptures. I won't ask for a raise of hands, but how many of you have, have actually read the four Gospels, St. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? <laughs> and I wouldn't be surprised if there were no hands, because the modern culture is against feeding the intelligence. But you can't be that stupid. You've got to feed your intelligence, and not with junk and not with just frivolous data but with real principles real truth and that's the catechism know our catechism we love the catechism and uh, most of you boys are homeschooled so when you have catechism as in your school in your day don't treat it like oh it's just another class like math or history or you know, geography no the religion is way higher than all that. And we've got to know the basics of our faith. And don't think, oh, traditional Catholics, we, all we get is catechism shoved down our throats. That's, that's garbage. The Jewish children for centuries, and even today, the Jewish children, that, younger than you, have to memorize the Psalms, have to memorize all the stories of Moses and the prophets. They've got to memorize it. They got to be able to memorize the entire psalm, and some of them are, are quite long. So I have heard this from apostate young adults who break away from the faith because oh, they say, oh, my parents forced the religion down my throat. And they go out to the world and they, they, they allow themselves to, for the devil to shove everything down their throat. Garbage, pornography, drugs, everything of, this, of the world. So never be one of those idiots who walk away and say, oh, the, the, my parents shoved the religion down my throat. That's a bunch of garbage. The parents have a duty to teach you. And they shove also chicken and rice and beans and, and all good meals down your throat. Do, you, do the kids ever complain about that? Do they complain about the parents giving them ice cream for dessert? No. But because they grow up and they, 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 they start loving sin more than God, they turn their back on God and they blame their parents. So never be like that. If, the par if you have parents that are teaching you the catechism, kiss them to death. Embrace them to death and thank God. Because how many parents are negligent on this and their kids end up not knowing any, their faith well and they end up sliding with the world and falling into hell. So please do not be any of those who say, oh, my parents shoved this stuff down my throat. That's stupid. Because the Jewish children, they got to learn the Bible better than any of us. By the time they're 13, they got to know all, most of the Psalms by heart. These are Jewish kids today. And do they hate their parents and say, oh, you shoved this, all this down my throat? No, they don't. They love and respect their parents because they try to obey the Ten Commandments. It's a false religion, the Jewish religion, 
but their children know their religion better than uh, most Catholics. And many Protestants too, their kids already know whole Bible verses, which is our book. The Bible is our Catholic book. So be grateful to your parents. And when it's time for catechism, don't be goofing off. This is it's serious business to know your faith. It's a matter of going to heaven or hell. It really is. And you gotta know your faith and we gotta love our we gotta love souls. So when people ask you, so why are you wearing that scapular? What's that thing around your neck? Oh uh, well, it's just you know, it's just something my mother gave me. You don't say that. Don't blame your mother. Tell them the reasons for the faith. St. Peter it says, give a reason for the hope that is in you. And tell them it's a sign that I'm consecrated to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Well, why her? Mary, isn't Jesus more important than Mary? And then, then you say, of course he is. But Mary is the mother of Jesus. Jesus is God and Mary is the mother of God. So her role and importance is so great in God's plan because Mary is the one that enabled God to take on a body in her womb and be born in, at Christmas Day as a baby and to die on the cross for our redemption. Something like that. And if you say something like that to some stranger in the street or somebody in the workplace, you can save those souls because you plant the seed of hope and love and the truth in them. And we're supposed to do this. That's why these martyrs, St. Chiriakos, went to death because they were seeking to bring souls to the Mass during persecution. They were hunted down. If, to go to Mass in many periods of history like this now, meant death for the priest and you many times and it's going to happen again during the reign of the antichrist he will try to abolish the catholic mass and they're already trying it now pope francis is trying to destroy this mass so you boys are in a it's a great fight we're in to defend the catholic faith and love the catholic faith and defend the truth so we are made to know god love him above all things and we got to pray for that Lord, inflame my heart that I love Thee above all things. Not just have it as a definition in our brain, but have it burning in our heart to really love God, to really love our Lord, to love the Blessed Virgin Mary, and speak to them constantly throughout the day. And when you get up in the night, raise your mind to God. It should be easy for us to do this. We swim in God, says St. John Berkman's, we swim in God like fish swim in water. We're constantly around the works of God. He holds us in existence. He gives the sunshine. He gives the air, the, the oxygen to breathe. He holds you in existence, keeps your heart beating. So we live in God like fish in water. How can we ignore him so much? To know, love, and serve him. To serve God is to reign as a king. To serve God is to reign as a king. But we must serve him. That is, obey his commandments. How many commandments are there? I won't add, this is not a catechism class, so obviously there's 10. The first three concern God directly. The, the following seven concern our neighbor. <coughs> so we're supposed to keep the commandments. <clears throat> and if you want to live a happy life, keep the commandments. If you want to live a miserable life and have fun and get drunk and sin in all of these ways, but your conscience will rip you to shreds. Your conscience will be dripping blood. And God will always bother you. The angel will always try to kick you in the rear end and say, wake up, you fool, wake up. So we must keep the commandments. And the way of happy life is the commandments. And then in all this, why? Because God gives us a promise and a reward. If you love and serve God with all your heart, die in the state of grace, keep his commandments, and strive to grow in holiness, you will obtain the happiness of heaven. St. John Vianney said, even if God didn't promise us the happiness of heaven, it would still be our duty to know, love, and serve God. It would be our duty. But he has promised happiness of heaven, the eternal happiness of heaven. So all the happiness... And this world, the good ice cream, the beautiful water, the ocean, the beautiful fun things in this world that are good and innocent, 
That's just nothing compared to the happiness of heaven. Absolutely a shadow. A shadow. So have our hearts anchored there. The joys of heaven. Christ having endured the sufferings of the cross. Kept the joy before him. Says St. Paul. The joy of, of saving so many souls to heaven. That was the joy of Christ. The sacred heart of Jesus. So our joy must be to be among the saints in heaven, be in the Blessed Trinity, the adoration of the Blessed Trinity. The happiness of heaven far surpasses anything we can imagine. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor can man possibly imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. So we've got to fight for that, and it's worth dying for. It's worth being butchered and tortured for. Think of the English martyrs in, in England. The priests who went from house to house trying to say in mass. And one time, many times actually, they were raided. The, the Protestant police would surround the house, break in. They would arrest the priest and arrest the family and arrest those going to mass. And many of them were fined or put in prison for a long time. And most of the priests were in prison for over a year and hanged, drawn, and quartered. That is, they would be hanged on, at the Tyburn tree, hanged on the rope, and right before they're about to pass out, they cut the rope, and the, the priest, like St. John Houghton, for example, he dropped to the ground, and he's panting for air. And then they, they strip off all his clothes, and then they take a knife and gouge open his belly and start ripping out 30 feet of the intestines every feet of them, and they're still alive, they can feel this. And while they're still alive, they, the executioner reaches in and grabs their heart. And in the case of St. John Houghton, one of the early martyrs under King Henry VIII, the executioner said, "Be look at the heart of a traitor. And then St. John Houghton, as he was dying, he asked the executioner, put the heart in my hand. And he died offering <coughs> his heart <coughs> to God, and he died that way, offering his own heart in his hand, <laughs> offering that to God. That's tremendous. And many of these martyrs did the same. And think of St. John Fisher. He was also the only bishop who stood up. So that tells us a lot of bishops slide with, with error. Most of the bishops went with the new religion in England. In the case of St. John Fisher, his head was chopped off, and the king had his head put up on the bridge so everyone can see his head. But what happened was, as the hours and days passed, his face looked younger. And it was, it was even kind of smiling, and it had color in his cheeks. And people were coming by to, to get touch their cloth to his blood to get relics of this saint, this holy bishop, St. John Fisher. And when the, when the crowd started to see and look at his face, <clears throat> that it was actually looking younger and healthy and his head is stuck up on a pole on the bridge then when the king got wind of it that this miracle was happening he, he had the head removed and put somewhere else so such is the humor of God so have our hearts anchored in the joys of heaven that's what we have to always have the focus and pray to the Virgin Mary and her immaculate heart to keep of that focus because it's easy to get distracted and drive off on a de detour and off the cliff by sin. So we got to keep praying every day. If you pray, you're going to save your soul. This goes for me too, especially a priest. If you pray, you're going to save your soul. If we don't pray, we're going to go to hell. It's really that simple. O Mary conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. O Mary conceived without sin, pray for us. O Mary conceived without sin, pray for us. And for those who do not have recourse to thee, especially all communists and Freemasons and other enemies of Holy Mother Church. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.